So as you guys know, you can access lots and lots of maps. So we're going to look at how we save one. So we're going to save a lovely map of the OSHQ here. So on the panel on the left, guys, you see on your number of tools you have underneath where you popped your postcode in. So to simply save a map, you come to Save Map. So we click on the tab. And then you get the option to just save a map. And that will save your map. You have to give it a title, a pupil name, and a class name. And that you can then simply just save that map and it will create your saved map and list it in under your save maps in that panel on the left hand side. Thank you very much, Laura. Okay, so you can see that map listed now on the left hand side. Now, when you also create map or save maps, what you can do is you can create your own Windows file structure. So there's a little but there's a little lock button there where you can log in with your passcode. Okay. So if Laura, if you can pop your pin code in if you can remember it. Yeah. So as you can see, guys, is when you pop your your code in, you get an option under the save maps there, and there's an extra box that comes up where it says you got the options to new, rename, and relock. So if you click new, Laura, yep. what you can then do is you can create a new folder. So in your school environment, rather than just have a huge, great big list of files that you've saved, you can actually create subfolders for your particular year groups. So your primary guys, you can go year R through to year six. Secondary guys, you can do year seven through to year 11. And within those, you can then create subfolders for the particular classes. Obviously, the rename one is obvious. So that would then rename that folder if you wish to rename that folder. Um, and you've also got the relock option, which you can then relock that particular admin tool. Don't click on that one, though, Laura. Okay. okay. Now, the admin, the this pa the the passcode you've got is the teacher's admin code, so you should never divulge that number to your pupils, because this is your administrative tool to create those folders. And as you can see, next to the folders that Laura's got on the screen there, there's also the the rubbish bin option. Now, this is your option to delete both folders and maps when you get too many within your particular listings there. So when you come to the end of the year and you want to remove those maps, you enter your PIN code and remove those maps and or folders as you seem appropriate. And then again, to just sa save a map, Laura, if you can do this, all you would do is highlight the folder you want it to be saved into on the left-hand panel, click the save map again, put in the details, and it will save the map then into that folder. So you can use all these individual folders rather than just collate a huge, great big list of maps under your login and password. So it just makes it easy for you guys to manage all those particular files. And as Laura's shown there, it will then give you the title, the date it was created, and who actually created that um, particular map. Well, this is a, the save maps is there for your pupils to be able to create maps, but also importantly for you guys. So you can create base maps, come back and use them time and time again if you need to. Now, there are a couple of things we need to make you uh, aware of when you save maps in this service. And the first one is probably around safeguarding issues. Now, it would be your discretion if you get your pupils to save personal information on a map. Simply because anyone that has access to your username and password will be able to view any maps that you save in this service. So when you save a map, anyone in your school can log in and they will be able to view that map. So around those safeguarding ones, it will be your discretion if you get pupils to save it in this service. Now, the second one as well is when you save a map, it finalizes that map. I.e. you cannot change that saved map immediately just by hitting save. This is an element that we've built in just to stop people tampering with other people's maps. So if you create a map and save it in the service and you then want to change that saved map, there is no automatic save. You'd have to re-save it with a different name, i.e. version 1, version 2, version 3. So this is just an option we put in there just to stop people going in, deleting things out of people's maps and then saving it. So there's, the pupils aren't capable of doing that in the service. So that's how we would save a map. So what we're going to look at now is we're going to look at how you can print and also save maps. So, Laura, if you can print, click on the print icon at the top. So you see across the row 
across the maps is a row of icons. And we're going to click on the print tool. So what you will see when you click on the print tool is you will get your layout of what your, your content's going to look like, as we can see here. So if Laura, click, if Laura clicks, then clicks on layout preview, we will then see the area that you will see when you can print. Now you can grab that box, which is Laura's going to do now, and you can move that box around. So if it doesn't cover the exact location you need it to be, you can move that around to show the location you're going to print. Okay. Now, as you can see on the dialog box here under your options, on print options, you can give this a title. You can enter it as a pupil name. You've got an option as well for a a scale so you can have a rounded scale or an exact scale so if you print into an appropriate scale you can do that as well now when you create the file it would create it as a pdf or a jpeg so a standard image file that you can then use at another time as you can see here guys you could print a4 or a3 as well as portrait or landscape and you can print any map you see in this service so any map you've added anything to, so if we, if we drew something on this map, there would be an option to tick the little box that says drawings. So if I've added an image, et cetera, et cetera, I can add that. If you want to click on add grid lines, Laura, and we'll show a one's grid line. So if I want my easterns and northerns around my map, when I come to create the generate the file, I can do that as well. So if you hit generate print file form, please, Laura. And as you can see, under the downloads, you will see your print file that you've created. So we've got our map of the location. As you can see, we've got our eastings and northerns all around the map because we want our grid lines. We've got our north pointer as well as our scale bar. And it also tells us who's printed this out in this location. So then you can save these maps. So there's an option here that it, you can't directly print from the service. You have to create this file. This is just to stop you, your pupils hitting your print button and running out your ink cartridge. But it also gives you those options to be able to save these maps to another location outside of the Digimap for School service. Now, this is where I would suggest that you would create your um, personal mapping for your pupils. So around that safeguarding issue, if you want to create personal maps of personal information on Rather than save it in the service, you would save this as a PDF or a JPEG image and then save it to your school network, which is a much safer environment to be able to save that to. Now, look, I'm going to get you to do one more thing. This might go a little bit slow, but we're going to do it. Guys, Laura, can you zoom out to show the extent of the world? So what's recently been added in the print option is now you can print a whole world map onto one piece of paper. So if Laura, if you go to the print ta print uh, tab again at the top. So there should be a little option there that says print the whole world. So now you can print this at A3 or A4. So if you want a global map of that location, you can print this. Uh, Laura, if you click on add a legend, so what we're going to do is we're going to print the legend that goes with this and you're going to click generate file and this might take it may take a few seconds to do this. OK, but when you create your any printed map and you want the appropriate legend or symbol sheet or key to go with that scale of map, you can generate that as well. So this is true for any of the current audit survey mapping the aerial imagery and either of the historical layers of maps you can access in the service. And as you will see when this eventually does this, this is also relevant for the world map as well. So if you're printing some of the overlays, for instance, you're looking at the biomes or you're looking at the climate detail, anything that has an extra key, volcanoes included, it will then generate that legend file and create you a small zip file, which Laura is going to show here. Perfect. So as you can see, guys, when you want your legend, it creates you two files. And if Laura clicks on the legend, if you've got, hopefully you've got a viewer here, we might be able to see that legend or the map. So you might be able to see the legend here, guys, if we can see the, and it will show you the legend for the, for the map we have on the screen. As you can see, it's just popped up here on the right. So again, it could be your current symbol sheet, your historical maps. And if Laura pick, clicks on the world map that she's got in her folder as well, you will also then see a preview of that world map. So as you can see, guys, when you create your folder, 
or Chris, sorry, create your map with your legend. There you go. We've got a, a, a nice little picture of the, the map for the global view there. You also, it creates a folder, but creates the two files in that zip folder. So you'll find your printed map and your legend also there. So guys, that's pretty it. That's pretty quick about how you save maps and how you print maps in the service. So you've got the two options. You can save the maps through the service in the save map option, as you can see on the left hand panel, or you can create your printed maps and then save those PDFs and or JPEGs somewhere else within your within your network or onto the hard drive of your machine.